Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters, Ramadan Mubarak. Today I will speak English and uh, I hope everyone is good. And uh, I would like to share a video about uh, Janna Paradise. And um, after the video uh, I will share my comment. So let's watch together. When you speak of the day of judgment, it's a lot of darkness and only our good deeds are lighting the way for us. We're desperately trying to find light and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lights up the parts of our bodies that were engaged in good deeds. Now that's the day of judgment when it's dark. But paradise on the other hand has no darkness. So what happens to all that light that was on our bodies when we no longer need to get through the darkness? When we enter into Jannah, that nur, the light becomes added zina, which is beauty on the very same parts of your body. So while you no longer need the light to see, the beauty of those good deeds will remain on you forever for everyone in paradise to see. Now, some are going to be more beautiful in some ways than others, but all will be beautiful in Jannah and not feel any deficiency of beauty because paradise is a place where no one feels left out. The Prophet ﷺ described that our faces on the Day of Judgment are as bright as our Iman, as our faith. So the first batch of people to enter Paradise, he said وسلم, that they have faces like the full moon. And the Prophet ﷺ was described as having a face like the full moon in this life. Now our forms in Jannah are going to be very different and it's hard to perceive and appreciate. The Prophet ﷺ said that the people of Paradise will be raised in the form of Adam ﷺ, 33 years old, with no hair on their bodies, and their eyes will be smeared with kuhud. Now obviously, hair on the body in this life is not necessarily unappealing, especially when you think about, for example, the beards of men. But remember, Jannah is different and our bodies are entirely different once we enter into that realm. Some of the descriptions even sound like translucent beings, but there's a clear, beautiful definition to the bodies at the same time. As for our height, the Prophet ﷺ said, everyone who enters into paradise will be in the form of Adam who is 60 cubits tall. So that's like 90 feet tall or about 30 meters. So when you speak of height, we're all going to have a height that is unknown to this world, but it's pleasing and we're all the same size in Jannah. We're all also the same age. And the Prophet ﷺ said that the age of the people of paradise is again, 33 years old. Now in this life, this age is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes as Balagha ashuddahu, which is your peak age. But even then, 33 in Jannah is not like 33 in this dunya because there's imperfection with every age in this dunya. But in Jannah, the point is, is that we're all at a middle age to our joy and to our delight. So we enter into Jannah with the height of Adam السلام, the beauty of Yusuf السلام, and the age of Isa السلام, longing for the companionship of Muhammad And of course, there's a well-known funny narration about the age of the people of paradise where the Prophet وسلم, jokes with an older woman about her entrance into Jannah. So this old woman says to the Prophet وسلم, Ya Rasulullah, ask Allah to enter me into paradise. And the Prophet وسلم, says, but old women don't go to Jannah. So she started to cry and the Prophet وسلم, said, no, no, I mean that no woman enters paradise while she is old. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna ansha'na hunna insha'a faj'alna hunna abkara uruban atraba. That we made them a new creation, young again, loving and equal in age. Now is this ayah talking about the women from paradise, which are the special creation known as Hur al Ain or the maidens of paradise? Or is this speaking about the believing women when they enter into paradise? So the answer to that question is that every description of the physical beauty of the Hur al Ain applies to the believing women as well, but there is more. In one narration, Umm Salama radiallahu anha asked the Prophet وسلم, she said, Ya Rasulullah, Nisa dunya afdal am Hur al Ain. O Messenger of Allah, are the believing women of this world better or are the maidens of paradise? And the Prophet ﷺ said, بَلْ نِسَاءُ الدُّنْيَا أَفْضَلُ مِنَ الْحُورِ الْعِينِ كَفَضْلِ الدِّهَارَ عَلَى البطانة. He said وسلم, rather the women of this world are better than the maidens of paradise in the same way that the outer lining of the garment is more beautiful than the inner lining. So the garment on the outside with its decoration and beauty 
over the garment on the inside. And Umm Salama radiallahu anha responds and she says, وَبِمَا ذَاكْ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ And on what basis is that, O Messenger of Allah? And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, بِصَلَاتِهِنَّ وَصِيَامِهِنَّ وَعِبَادَتِهِنَّ Because of their prayers, because of their fasting, and because of their worship of Allah. So the believing women who enter paradise from this world will have the beauty of their creation and the beauty of their ibadah. They'll have the beauty of their worship and righteousness added to the beauty of their creation and paradise. And Ibn Abbas said, if a woman of paradise was to show her wrist between the heavens and the earth, the whole creation would be infatuated by her beauty. And if she showed her veil or her garment, it would steal the light of the sun. And if she exposed her face, its beauty would illuminate everything between the heavens and the earth. So our beauty in Jannah, women and men, is more than this world could handle. And we will all be more beautiful than anyone ever seen on the face of this earth. Now, it's not just beauty, but also the functionality of the body that's different. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the people of paradise will eat and drink, but they will not blow their noses, nor will they need to relieve themselves or digest their food or urinate. So we have no excretions from the body in Jannah. No urine, no mucus, no menses. So how does the food and the drink come out? Well, remember the mechanics of Jannah and the hows are different. So the realm of possibility is entirely different. The Prophet ﷺ said that we would sweat and burp musk that inspires us to glorify Allah, not out of heat or discomfort or indigestion, but only in ways that are pleasing and pleasant. And what do we do in this world when we sneeze? We say Alhamdulillah naturally. And in Jannah, you naturally will praise Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala with every one of those. And some of the scholars said we had to come to this earth to use the bathroom because Adam and Eve ate from a tree that moved their stomachs in a strange way. So treat this earth like a bathroom stop and continue on your journey back to Jannah. So why do we even have organs or do we have organs in Jannah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Some of the scholars said we probably don't have organs. And if we do have organs, then certainly not the ones that we had in this dunya. But there is a level of being described again as transparent beings. So for example, the Prophet ﷺ said you could see the bone marrow of a woman in paradise. And that doesn't sound particularly beautiful here, but it will all make sense when we get there, inshallah ta'ala. Even our communication. How do we talk to each other? Do we all speak Arabic? The famous quote that the language of the people of paradise will be Arabic isn't a hadith, but some scholars said that at that point, perhaps we all know and speak Arabic. And Allah knows best, but we will be able to communicate in ways that we can understand and be understood. And there's some form of common language amongst the people of paradise. But reflect for a moment on the connection between our bodies in Jannah and how we used our bodies in dunya. You're asked about your body and how you consumed it on the day of judgment. And the wounds of the shuhada are flowing with beauty as they once did with blood on the day of judgment. And it's all beautiful scented perfume. And in dunya, you asked Allah to beautify your khuluq, being your character as he beautified your khalq, being your creation. Allahumma kama ahsanta khalqi fahassin khuluqi. Oh Allah, as you have beautified my outside, beautify my inside. And now in Jannah, your creation is beautified because of your character. And in that is a sign that if you focus on your inner beauty in this life, Allah will beautify your outer beauty in the next in ways you could never imagine. MashaAllah, this video is amazing. Uh, to be honest, uh, we never see Jannah, we never see Paradise, but we can imagine how uh, is Paradise because the Quran uh, describes in details how the Paradise will be. So, for to make sure we go to Jannah, uh, especially in this month, we need to take the opportunity for to be a good person, uh, pray especially in the night and um, give more zakah help people, especially we don't need to be a good person just on the month of the Ramadan, but also after the Ramadan. So every day, every month, every hour, we need to make sure we are good Muslim. We have to do very good things because inshallah, we will see everyone in the paradise. And the, the paradise is a beautiful place. So we are here in this world, in this life, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests us if we have the right 
the right person for to go to the paradise. So the goal for to go to the paradise is to do our best because we don't know how long uh, we live in this life because if we die we don't have uh, no more opportunity so don't forget to comment and uh, subscribe my channel and uh, i will bring you uh, more video inshallah soon assalamu alaikum